Hey, it's the BNPR show, number nine, a celebration of stylized rendering. Today's highlights, texture paint new features, controlled cell shading, and the hair modeling contest winner. Now, time for the news. Let's start with a public service announcement. Please try not to use the hashtag NPR on Twitter to tag your NPR tweets. Unfortunately, hashtag NPR is used by the National Public Radio Station in the US. Please use hashtag BNPR instead, which means Blender non photoreal Pablo DeBarro is working hard on improving Blender's texture painting. First up, those jaggy artifacts while painting lines are gone. Texture paint now supports fractional brush radius. Second, texture brushes now have new properties. At the initial glance from his tweet, it feels like having Paint Tool SAI brushes. The new brush properties are Opacity, Flow, Density, Hardness, Wet Paint, Tip Shape, and Tip Rotation. With these, us Blender heads can have our own truly free Paint Tool SAI. This is a mind-opening article by Ahmed Amidi on Cartoon Brew. In it, he states that TV show production has followed a very fixed and very optimized pipeline. The result is that every show has a samey look and feel. He argues that shows like Undone has broken the workflow to bring visuals to a new level by working on the creator's intention. By doing so, the show can better communicate the state of mind of the character by exploring the uncanniness of reality, but the unreality at the same time. Be sure to read this article fully Oh, and we just realized this. We can do NPR without doing the established tune shading as well. Yeah, we know. This is deep stuff. Two sources to sketch shaders by the community. The first is Tom Krellen, who has a sketch shader on Gumroad. It is pay as you want, so go check out his shader. Nagoyan Hongmin made a pencil shader in OSL. He uses the metalness map to control three levels of sketch shading. With freestyle line art added, the result looks marvelous. Go pick his brain for some details. Max Cajazieras made a comic shader. The result looks very similar to comic shading. Mind blown, right? Go pick his brain about it. Franck Moe made a procedural stylized water surface shader. The shader can be customized to many styles, from bubbly to wavy and even fractally. Fractally is a word now, and you can find this node set up in the Blender market. Let's support artists who do cool stuff. Here are a few line art renderer updates. Feature line modifier is now in object field. It works like setting up a material. As of right now, it doesn't support selection of intersection lines because it involves two or more objects at once. We can now have multiple grease pencil materials for different line types. Line rendering will auto-update when the scene is changed. As weird as this may sound, please try to crash LAMPR and send the blend file to Wu Yimi. With the improvement on how grease pencil lines are handled, the inking result looks so much better. At underscore Yadub is working hard to make lasso erasing a grease pencil object possible. It is still the early days, but this looks so much fun. We can't wait to see the more optimized tool working. Grant Abbott made a demonstration of texture painting a wooden beam. The takeaways from his video are, texture painting is fairly easy, and Blender can generate the passes for you, but painting the details by hand will make it look more NPR compared to auto-generated. Go watch the short demonstration, and after that, dive right into texture painting yourself. It's very fun. Last show, we featured the animation by LionX Animations. This time, he gives us tips when working with Grease Pencil. Those tips are the problem one will face when appending Grease Pencil animations, how to fix animation sliding, how to add atmosphere effects, how to preview Grease Pencil effects, how to remove rim effect from shadows, how to make masking on effects, how to use an image plane to make a scene lightweight, and Tips on making and editing background images. 
And there is a very happy story at the end of the video, so be sure to watch it till the end. Raymond Cripps made a video on how to make a convincing shell shader for anime style. The core idea is intentionality, that is, what the creator wants to show and not govern by default algorithms driving how the image will look. To do so is to take control from the software and introduce the artist's intention. If you follow NPR long enough, this idea is fundamental in all NPR creations. Things to control are color used, the shadow area, highlights, the shape and flow of the shadows, ambient hue, and line art. To take control, three texture maps are used. The base map, which is the lit area colors, the subsurface scattering map, which is the shadow colors, the ILM map. This is a texture storing multi-layer of data in RGB color channels, like specular density, ambient occlusion, specular occlusion, surfaces where specular will happen less or will never happen, and surface line art that will work together with an inverted hole. And of course, control does not end there. To control the shape of the area of the lit and the shadow, we use vertex normal editing. We think everyone should be familiar with this concept by now. We have discussed a lot about it in the first few shows. You can refer to those shows for the details. Then at the end of the tutorial, Raymond shows how to assemble the material using all nodes available in Blender. This tutorial is a lengthy process to introduce control and intentionality. Please watch it after this show. Apex Legends just released a story animation called Voidwalker. Many NPR techniques are shown. Be sure to decipher each NPR technique displayed. League of Legends has a new animation called Light and Shadow. If you are not sure what is happening, go read the comment section of the animation on YouTube. We see not only 2D techniques in 3D, we can see actual 2D being used. Animation is so smooth, it's brilliant. Dillian Goo is one punching meow. Oh, that didn't come out right. Anyway, a new character is introduced in this new animation called Garu the Wolf. See how animating and changing material for different situations and feel is done here. This is what we have been telling everyone for a long time. In NPR, shaders are animated for emotional impact. Go watch this animation again to see how the shaders are animated. You see them coming, but which artworks got selected in this show? Let's find out.
this one thread on Blender Artist Forum by this guy. Sorry, we don't know how to pronounce his name. He brings the lasso tool painting looks with his limited knowledge on how to use Blender into 3D. From what we gather from the thread, his style is very easy to do. You just have to translate the style from 2D painting onto 3D planes. Once the basic scene is done, you just model these meshes in 3D space, focusing on shapes, silhouettes, depth, and composition, not the details. We like this style a lot. Time to announce the winner of the hair modeling contest. The winner is at Dujan Dev on Twitter. From his tweet, it took him four days to model the hair. At Dujan Dev, please DM us to get your copy of Soul Stirring Digital Color Mastery, which consists of a screen friendly ebook, example sheets, and a jumpstart video. Congrats. If you've made it this far, thank you. Please subscribe to this channel and tell your friends about the show as well. To those who click the show notes, we have hidden many resources in there. If we made all of them into the show, it would probably be an hour long. Also, go to these links to get even more NPR greatness. The Facebook group has many in-depth discussions. Be sure to answer these questions when you join. Want to decipher how NPR works? Be one of the 200 active patrons to fund the stylized documentary we are planning to make. And these cool patrons are helping make the documentary a step closer to reality. Before we go, one last question. What makes you happy today? <laughs>